right, first episode. Um, this one's going to be on something called Dutch National Flag Partitioning. Basically, given a flag with certain colors, um, to, per to partition it correctly would be to essentially sort it. Um, in this example, it comes out unsorted, say, um, and say this was the ordering you would want, white, red, black. You'd want to order it like so. I don't actually like this real world example that much, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to think about, but um, in terms of how, how you would look at it in a function, given an array of numbers um, and a pivot index, uh, you would sort it around whatever the value was at the pivot index. So for example, um, right here we have a bunch of zeros, ones, and twos. The pivot index is three, so zero, one, two, three and the pivot value of that index is zero so all that means is that everything that appears to the right of zero must be greater than zero and everything that appears to the left must be less than so this would be a valid partitioning all that happened was we moved the zeros to the beginning so everything to the left nothing if nothing is to the left that means that fits that condition and then everything to the right is greater than the zero. So the only comparison that matters is whether something is greater than or less than the pivot value. And you can see that this is actually not sorted within the sublist, but it is partitioned. Um, so another example would be, okay, same array, say the pivot index was two, um, and the pivot value would also be two. How would you partition that? Okay. One way you could just move the twos to the right side, that would be a valid partitioning. And for both of these cases, if you just sorted the whole thing, um, that would also be a valid partitioning. So what you can already th start thinking from that is like, okay, I know I can sort anything with quick, quick sort and n log n time, um, but because we have looser um, constraints on it not needing to be fully sorted, maybe we can get a better runtime. And because uh, because you, we still need to look at every single item in the list, let's shoot for O of n runtime. So method one, um, say you're looking at this example and the pivot um, index is three meaning zero, one, two, three, meaning the pivot value is zero. How would you solve this if you just had to do it like this? Well, you would say, okay, we just move the zeros over to the left. And that's, that's a valid partitioning. Um, similarly, if the pivot index was two and the pivot value was also two, you would just move these to the right. And that would be it, that would work. Um, but those are each only solving half the problem because it's nice if uh, your pivot indexes are at, at the edge, but we also have to count, count, account for the case where the pivot index is one and, or where the value would be one because that both, ha both, has to, both has to move items less than the pivot index to the left and move items greater than the pivot index to the right. So, um, uh, there's there's multiple ways to do it. First way, um, I would call this a brute force solution, but it's still okay to bring it up in interviews, is uh, say, okay, um, why not just go through the list one by one and make three sublists? Sorting it like so. So that was O of N runtime so far. And then um, it also is requiring O of N auxiliary space. And then after one more pass, just add them all back in. So we have one solution, O of N runtime, O of N space. You could ask your interviewer, is that good enough? I bet they'll say do it in place. So. Let's do it again.
this is the original array of red again, you could say, okay, um, at every single point, see, compare two items and uh, see if they're out of order. And if so, swap them. So for example, you would say, okay, if you're just looking at these two, does this look, do these items look out of order? No, because one is less than pivot index, one or zero is less than the pivot index, one is equal to, this is fine. You say, okay, let's look at these two. Just the zero and the two, that's looking fine. Zero and zero looking fine. Everything looks good so far. Okay. Now we're gonna go like this. One is less than, it appears to the left of two, that's fine. Here's where we get a case where we actually need to fix it. So zero is less than the pivot index, but it also appears to the right. So let's swap. And once that happens, we can actually increase this. So um, now we're looking at these two and we'll actually swap them because they're in the wrong order. And you'll notice we're starting to actually build um, a partially partitioned array. This is called being stable, a, a stable sort, um, in that if you if the algorithm somehow stopped, uh, it would be partially sorted um, already. So, you know, you would continue on and you say, okay, comparing these two looks fine, comparing these two does not look fine. And then you would eventually end up with that. How's the runtime? Well, it's kind of in, um, if, you if you think about it, we had to go, it's like a nested for loop. So this is O of N, this is O of N, this is O of N. So it would be O of N squared runtime, which is bad, because why would we not just quick sort it with N log N? Um, but we did it with no extra space. Let's look into what we were actually doing. Um, let's look at what we, what we were actually doing. So how about instead of, what we were doing is that we were separating the array into like a sorted and an unsorted part, and then um, basically increasing it by one, increasing the sorted thing by one after we searched what to swap it for. So let's see if we can do this in a couple passes. So O of N runtime. Um, let's get the original ray. Um, how about on one pass, we basically say, okay, if an item is less than the pivot, just move it to the left. And then we'll actually keep a pointer um, as for the next spot to write it to. If that doesn't make sense, I'll try and explain it a bit. So for this first case, we would say, okay, is zero less than the pivot? Okay, swap it so that it resides in the zeroth spot. Um, and then now we would increase this and say, okay, um, this is the next spot we're gonna write any item that's less than the pivot to. Is this less than the pivot? No, it's fine. Um, now we're looking at this. Is this less than the pivot? No, we're fine. Is this less than the pivot? Yes, swap it. Increase. Is this less, less than the pivot? No, no, no. So, um, It's okay, we definitely grouped these, this part is correct, but now we need to group items that are greater than the pivot. So we would do the same thing starting from the other side. Is this, is this item greater than the pivot? No. Greater than the pivot? No. Greater than the pivot? Yes. Swap. Decrease. Is this item greater than the pivot? No. Is this item greater than the pivot? Swap. Greater than the pivot? Greater than the pivot? You could do, you, you basically, that's the idea. So we've improved the runtime. 
we're actually O of N runtime because we're just doing two passes and we didn't use any auxiliary space. So say your interviewer says, okay, you came up with an O of N runtime solution, O of one space, can you do it in a single pass? You say, okay, let's give it a go. Um, you can keep three pointers, one of a sublist of items that you know that is less than the pivot, equal than the pivot, and greater than the pivot. And over time, you can basically either shrink your search space by either one for an element if you know that's greater than the pivot, or you can, um, if you find an element that is less than the pivot, you can increase where you're searching for then. Or if you find an element that is equal to the pivot, you can also um, increase your search space in that way too. At the end of the list, basically you're trying to just swap things around until you, um, until eventually this equal pointer equals the greater pointer. I'll, I'll work out a concrete example because that didn't make that probably didn't make much sense. So say we're looking right here, one of three things can happen. One, less than the pivot, two, equal to the pivot, or three, greater than the pivot. This is actually less than the pivot. So um, what we'll do here is increase um, both of these. Actually, we'll just increase the uh, yeah, we'll, we'll increase both of these basically. So now we're looking at our next item. We say, okay, this is actually equal to the pivot. So I'll just increase my equal pointer. And you can see we're already starting to like make three sub lists. This would be items that are less than, this would be items that are equal than. This is our unknown search space. And again, again, we'll eventually move this over and that items over here will be items that are definitely higher and um, eventually these will meet somewhere. Our next item is greater than the pivot. So uh, we'll actually swap this with wherever our greater pointer is pointing at. And we'll decrease that pointer. Um, our next item is equal to the pivot. So we'll increase this. Our next item is less than the pivot, so we'll actually uh, swap this and increase these. Our next item is greater than the pivot, so we'll swap these and decrease. And our next item is equal, so we'll just increase equals. And at this point, we have three lists of items that are greater, equal than, and less than our pivot value. So this was actually one pass because every single step we either increase the equal or we're decreasing our 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 greater upper our greater than pointer every single time. Um, so uh, let's take a look at how. So basically, we did this. And this is about as good as you can get. Um, let's see how it would look like in code. Record. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so um, basically we have to know, we have to get the pivot value first. Equals a dot get at pivot index. That's pretty standard. And then let's initially set these three pointers. So set um, list dividers. So int smaller equals zero, int equals 
equals zero. And then int greater equals a dot size. And then because we don't know exactly how many steps this will go, um, one way would do it would just be a while loop and that while equals is less than greater because every single step we're either increasing equals or decreasing greater. And then within this step, there's three cases. So if a dot get equal compare to um, pivot, it's less than zero. Else if, and then this will be equals to zero. And I'll explain this in a sec. If you add these comments in and actually explain them, interviewers will like that because reading people's code is generally kind of a pain. So in our first case, um, let's do, so if something is less than zero, I'll, uh, this first case was a little not super obvious, so I'll just continue, or I'll just use an example. Say we've gotten to, um, So say we're examining, we've gotten to the point where ex we're examining this index three. Uh, this is less than the pivot index. So what do we need to do? Um, we need to swap this and then the start. A start um, equals, or I guess smaller. So we're swapping these two and then we're actually increasing both of these pointers. So smaller and equals, smaller plus plus, equals plus plus. Um, what if we are examining something that's equal? Or then, that one's very easy, we just increase the equals. Equals plus plus. Um, and then if we ever get a case where um, we reach something that's greater than, then that means we need to swap um, that value with whatever is pointing at um, the greater minus one value. And then we need to decrease the greater. A equal greater minus one equals and greater minus minus. Um, it'd be probably nice to like walk through a complete run through of how your code works, but I think we've gone over this enough. Um, I'll run some test cases just for a sanity check. And it looks like we've test all the pass all the test cases. So that's Dutch, Dutch national flag partitioning. Um, four run, four solutions. In an interview, it's useful to come up with one of, you don't have to immediately know all of these, but um, if you could come up with one of the worst solutions and tell them the trade-offs and then maybe get to number three, I think they would be pretty happy with that. And then this would be like an extra credit um, if you could get it in one pass. But yeah, there we go.